All right, it's four o'clock, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. Today is the first um, in our series of webinars celebrating CTE Month. And today, Katie Paulson, the CTSO um, Center Director in Watertown out of Lake Area Tech, is going to be presenting to us on our CTS programs and how we can market them to our schools and our communities. Um, and if you have any questions, you can put them in the chat. And these uh, presentations will be available um, by recording if you'd like to share out with others at a later date. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, Katie, you can go ahead and take it away. Thank you. Awesome, thanks, Kara. Yes, like Kara said, I am the CTSO Center Director. Um, we, the CTSO Center was created really very recently. Um, so about a year and a half into creation. So really just kind of figuring out where we, we can best offer our, you know, our services and better our CTSOs. Um, so like Kara said, I'm going to give you a little, a few tips and tricks on how to market, uh, maybe some ideas market your CTSOs out, and then also maybe create some partnerships within your communities. So um, today I'm going to talk a little bit about who we are, what we do, what you can do, how others can help, potential partnerships, and why communities need us, and then answer any further questions um, that you guys may have. You'll notice our logo, familiarize yourself with the CTSO Center logo. CTSO stands for Career and Technical Student Organization. Um, we do have a website, sdctso.org. Um, we try to keep that very, very relevant and up to date with our CTSOs. And then we are also on Facebook. So who we are, um, one of the biggest things, we are the statewide career and technical student organizations. So including on the right of your screen there, Educators Rising, FCCLA, FBLA, Skills USA, FFA, and HOSA um, are our six statewide CTSOs that fall under the CTSO Center. So that's who we are. So I work directly with the state directors, um, executive secretaries of these organizations. We collaborate, we work together on collaborative events as well as um, I help them in ways that they might need with their uh, standalone individual um, events throughout their, their CTSOs. So, Again, those are our six statewide CTS, CTSOs that fall under the umbrella of the CTSO Center here in South Dakota. What we do, so together as a CTSO Center, we do quite a few events and different things. Uh, so I will touch on a few of those. Capital City Experience is an event where we bring all six state officer teams together um, to the legislature. It's actually next week we're hosting this in Pierre. Um, we do, we speak with legislators. Um, the, the students get that great experience. We host the Department of Ed Secretary, Department of Labor Secretary, and the Department of Social Services Secretary for a dinner. We, uh, our students are involved or get to watch, get to sit in on the committee meetings that happen on Wednesday morning. So a very rich um, experience of local legislative leadership with our lawmakers. Um, so that's a great event. Always in February, always over session. We do a summer officer training. So after our state officer teams are elected at their state conferences in the spring, um, we kind of let them do their own thing, go to their, do their nationals all summer long. Um, but really early June is when we host our summer officer training. So we bring all six teams together. Um, we do some leadership training. I also work with the state directors on, you know, what some of those training needs are uh, with kind of the the changing of how students are are taking in their information um, and really what we need our officer teams to do. So really nice with some of those things. Um, we can do some cross CTSO training, but we can also train as teams um, so that those are really great experiences. 
a spark conference um we hosted a couple of these this last fall. Um, these are probably going to be looking a little bit different this year. Um, we're still kind of working on this. So this is something really new to us um, since the creation of the CTSO Center. So we want to make this really great. And we're still kind of trying to put all of those great thoughts together for that one. So stay tuned on information there. The CTSO Center, along with the state directors for uh, the organizations, we host the SDACTE conference kickoff every um, very end of July, early August. So most all of our advisors are also SDACTE members. Um, so it's a great place for us to go um, and, in and kind of share our, our CTSOs, uh, just be there, kind of really just seeing the the advisors and and you know collaborating and and deepening those relationships um so that's a great event that we always host and then in the past couple of years we've offered the revitalization grant so we've offered roughly 200 to 250 thousand dollars we've given two local CTSOs to revitalize in the last couple of years so we had actually three rounds now um these are complete. We are done with these, but we are really um, excited about what that money and what those um, projects are going to do for the future of the local CTSOs. So that's a little bit about what we do as a whole um, with all of the CTSOs together under the umbrella of the center. What you can do. So I want to first to go through the CTSO value matrix because I think it's really great for not only you to understand, but for others to understand um, what you're doing. And maybe if you need a leverage or kind of up some of these, you can do that. So as the advisor, as the, the CTSO or the, you know, kind of the expert, um, CTSOs really provide that experiential learning. So an application. So all of the CTSOs have kind of different industries that they follow, right? So Educators Rising, specific to education, HOSA, specific to healthcare, uh, FFA, you know, the agriculture, kind of that that leadership in ag. Um, they're all, they all have kind of their niche there in the industry. And so really getting them to kind of experience what those industries are like and what those careers might look like is a really great place um, to do that with the competitions and all of the different um, opportunities there there are industry specific in each CTSO. Leadership development and skill attainment. Um, you know, watching students in CTSOs just grow in their leadership is really awesome. And it's easy to do, it's easy to see, right? Students are running meetings, so they're doing it at their local level. Um, they compete, whether it's regional, state level, very great experiences um, there to grow leadership. And you really do see that within the students and CTSOs. And then number three, classroom integration. So really bringing a CTSOs into the classroom, um, whether every single student in your class is a member of the, a specific CTSO or not, it's really, really great to integrate a lot of those different uh, pieces into the classroom. And all of the CTSOs are a little bit different in how that how that might look, um, but all of them have great resources for you. So if this is something you're, you're looking at, um, please reach out to me or to your state director and we can, we can get you in the right place because classroom integration um, really also makes it a little easier for you to kind of Two, two birds with one stone there. So really, as the advisor, you're you're offering all these things under, under the leadership of your CTSO. And so um, it's really great for students to grow and learn and just be, be better, better students um, joining your CTSO. So um, that's a little bit on, on kind of the advisor side, the advisor role. Um, and so I think this is a great matrix and kind of how all of those three run together. And like I said, every CTSO is a, a little bit of a different industry. And so they, they all do their things a little bit different, but you're still getting the experiential learning, the leadership development, and the option for the classroom integration as well. 
So next, let's, let's jump to how others can help. So this is really um, based off of others as really anyone. So whether this is other students in the school that aren't CTSO members, um, other, you know, community members, other, you know, could be industry, could be anything, really think about what you do, what activities you do as a club, or what you need to be doing as a club, what you need to be implementing, um, events, um, meetings, all those different things. Um, where are you asking for your volunteers? Um, are you are you asking others in the school to volunteer? Are you asking parents or community members? Um, really does depend on what you're doing here, um, but that's a really good one to uh, to be able to reach out from your net of just the normal people that always volunteer for you or or your members. Uh, you know, bring a friend, do this. So really kind of also depends on what you're doing, but volunteers is a good way to really get people to see what you're doing. Um, share and like on socials. You know, this is a free way for people to help you. So are you encouraging your members and their friends, everybody to share and like different socials? Do you have contests going on on there? Are you active? Um, those things, that's really where our students are are getting their information and getting their news and getting all of the things that they're really kind of bringing in is on their phone, unfortunately. And so making that really fun and your students want to do that stuff because that's really what they're, they're interested in that. That's what they're kind of, they're going at. So encourage, you know, a calendar, a social calendar, um, for, for your meetings and for your officers and your members to really get involved in. Um, are you inviting guests to your meetings? So really making your local chapter meetings fun, engaging, um, bring, bring people in, bring leaders in, um, you know, make them make sense for you because if students, if it's fun, students want to come and they want to bring their friends. So Yes, it's not just let's meet for 10 minutes here or just so we say we had a meeting this month and blah, 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 like really, really make it meaningful. And I know it's hard to find time and it's hard to find all those things. But if you make it really fun and meaningful, um, students are going to want to come and then they're going to talk about it. Um, and so also, this is a great place to get community members involved in your chapters, Um local industry people or, um, you know, really anyone, you know, retired folks that are really involved in the community. Uh, where does this make sense? You don't have to bring a guest to every meeting, but it's nice to have, uh, you know, something different as well. Also, when you're prepping for competitions, who, how are you doing that? Uh, so others can help you in ways of com practice com competing in front of peers or practice competing in front of a panel of um, community members that you've brought in as, as the advisor. Um, but they also get to see how awesome your students are. In turn, might turn into, hey, has the bank ever reached out to you about this or this? And so just creating those those relationships and deepening those connections. Um, when others see what you're doing and seeing how great CTSOs are, um, the student leadership, you know, the, all of those things into industry, uh, it's awesome. And it, it really, they start asking questions and the wheels start turning. But also creating that culture, right? So doing, having the meetings where people wanna go to, yes, you need to get work done, but really just kind of creating that sense of, you know, community for your members as well. Creating that culture that people want to be involved in uh, is awesome. I will say that's probably hands down the number one reason why I was so involved in CTSOs in high school and college. Um, I just, I love that culture of being a little bit independent on, on working on things, but working on your projects in you know, study hall and after school and before school, 
those were fun, fun times. I was still in sports and all of that. And it's a very similar thing. Um, but I just think the culture was, was so awesome for me and just growing in your leadership and, um, having some autonomy to, you know, work on your projects without your advisor right behind your back, you know, like get, show me this or whatever. So, um, doing all of those things. And I know they're, they're all kind of different avenues a little bit, but, um, really others can help you. And it's, it's kind of beneficial to have others really help you to, to see the bigger picture in your community of what you're all doing as well. Some potential partnerships. Um, I don't know if this will work. Let's see. Not We're getting there. Sorry. All right. Well, there's a little document here and it's a little bit more on um, the side of giving to the industry person, um, like why should you partner with a CTSO and what CTSO aligns with your industry and all of those things. So as an advisor, you really know what is aligning, what companies, what industries, those types of things. Um, but what partnerships can look like, they can look very different. Um, but all CTSOs look very different. All local C CTSOs look different, right? No two FCCLA chapters are created equal across the state. They all do things a little bit different in what they can do, what their membership is, blah, blah, blah. Um, so partnerships, same thing. So what activities are you doing? You know, can you partner with, um, let's say, the local bank or somebody to host the first tailgate at the first opener football game. You know, are you doing it for fundraising funds? Are you doing it for just viewership? What are the goals also of, you know, what are you trying to do? Just get yourself out there to recruit? Or are you trying to um, get some funds for state conference, national conference? Um, so thinking of your goals and then thinking, who can help me with this? Um, some thinking of activities that you can do, right? So the local bank is probably going to be like, great, as long as you have the manpower and you would probably do with your members. So some of those things, um, fundraiser ideas that have worked well for some, uh, you know, the chase, the ace, maybe that's what too watered down in your town. Um, Super Bowl board is something like that, where you can, your students can go out and sell squares um, you know, people are really not too apt to buy stuff anymore. So thinking outside the box in that aspect, um, having an open house at your school or for your program, um, where maybe if it's a skills chapter, um, and they've, they've built quite a few things from like Etsy, Pinterest type stuff. And now they have invited all these people to this open house and they have a silent auction for these items, but all the materials were donated from, let's say the local um, lumber yard or something. Uh, so just kind of really thinking outside the box, but having your students help you um, kind of create these ideas, right? So make it make sense to your organization make it make sense for your students, really have them vested in it. But also, um, if you do most of the legwork for a lot of these community, um, you know, partner opportunities, they're more than willing to, to kind of jump on board because what CTSOs do is really very awesome. Uh, so could they come into one of your meetings again and be a guest speaker? Could they be a judge? Maybe you need, maybe your state director needs more judges at the state conference. Could they see your organization at that level um, and also want to do something at the local level? So really creating creating the, the opportunities for partnership and also deepening that, that relationship. So I think those are kind of the biggest things um, is creating an opportunity for a partnership but then also, um, 
you know, vesting and having your students be involved and, and all of those good things. So um, potential partnerships are awesome and they're, I know they're needed uh, for the funds and all of the, you know, just the visual of your CTSO. And so as the advisor, unfortunately, it's kind of on you a little bit to create those opportunities, but there are, there are quite a few out there. And, you know, our communities need us. They really do. Our students are the future, whether they're leaders or not. And so um, creating more leaders and getting them involved in CTSOs, I think is super important. Um, the photo there is of our legislative shadow day last year. So we also get a photo with the governor. I mean, it's just a really cool day. These students get to see a lot um, within their, their local organizations, um, as well as under the, the CTSO Center um, umbrella, I guess you could say. So lots of great things, uh, but communities need these students to come back to. Um, they need future customers and leaders and all of those things. Um, so I think now, I mean, now more than ever, they're really, they're looking for ways to help, but also making it as seamless as possible for them um, to help you is, is really important with kind of that partnership piece. That's really all I have. Um, any other questions, reminder to check out our website and like us on Facebook and all of those good things as well. All right, Katie, thank you so much. Um, if I get any questions, I will be sure to send them your way. And yep. I appreciate uh, you taking the time to share this information with us today. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thanks. Take care. Yep, bye.